Survivor Series. Now, I know some of you less wrestling inclined folks may be confusing this with a certain CBS reality competition, but nope, we're not voting anyone off the island tonight. Rather, we'll be diving into the rich history of World Wrestling Entertainment's annual November pay-per-view. The year was 1987, a time when Hulkamania was running wild and Thanksgiving week was about to be more than just turkey, football, and cranberry sauce. The then WWF, hot off the successes of WrestleMania 3, decided to give us another feast, the inaugural Survivor Series. This was the second WWF pay-per-view event after WrestleMania, with the first ever Survivor Series taking place on November 26, 1987, in Richfield, Ohio. In the early years of the show, Survivor Series either took place on the night before Thanksgiving or on Thanksgiving night itself, so fans could watch the likes of Hulk Hogan, Macho Man Randy Savage, Bret the Hitman Hart, and more duke it out on television while giving thanks and enjoying a nice meal with family. But by the time the mid-1990s rolled around, it became a Sunday pay-per-view because WWF realized that their fans were used to ordering shows on Sunday night rather than some other day of the week. If wrestling fans are anything, it's creatures of habit. What's always made Survivor Series unique is that its cards almost always have featured elimination matches featuring two teams of four or five people led by a captain who face off under tag team rules, with the winning team decided once all their opponents have been eliminated. Survivor Series has been regarded as one of the big four, now big five pay-per-views with the addition of Money in the Bank in 2022, along with WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, and SummerSlam, the promotion's original four annual events, and their four biggest events of the year. However, Survivor Series is often looked at as the weakest of the bunch. At times, overbooked elimination matches with no titles on the line lead to low stakes. However, despite this notion, Survivor Series has delivered some of the most memorable, iconic, and infamous moments in WWE history. And today, we will journey through this event's remarkable history. Our story will begin at the first ever Survivor Series in 1987, with a card made up entirely of elimination tag matches to promote the new concept. Fans loved the initial setup of Survivor Series, with matches like Team Strike Force versus Team Heart Foundation. The main event of the night featured Andre the Giant, leading a group of monster heels against Hulk Hogan's babyface team where Andre the Giant would be the sole survivor defeating the babyface team in a rare sight at a golden era pay-per-view, ending with the heels coming out on top. With the groundwork laid, Survivor Series would continue the formula in the following years into the 1990s with many memorable moments throughout the decade. We will now look at some of those moments at some of the pay-per-views throughout the 1990s. Our first stop is Survivor Series 1990, with the debut of the intimidating and eerie Undertaker. Little did we know at the time that this wrestler would go on to be one of the biggest names in WWE history for over the next 27 years. Survivor Series 1990 also saw another debut, a less popular one, but an infamous one all the same, the Gobbly Gooker, a human-sized turkey who hatched from an egg at the event in a strange yet mildly amusing segment. The gobbledygooker would become a common sight in the WWE around Thanksgiving and is a testament to the outlandishness of professional wrestling. The following year, in 1991, we got the first ever singles match in Survivor Series history. The event pitted champion Hulk Hogan against The Undertaker. This match would lead to The Undertaker winning his first ever WWE Championship, thanks to interference from Ric Flair who cost Hulk Hogan the match. Jumping ahead a bit to Survivor Series 1994, we saw Owen Hart cost his brother, Bret Hart, the WWE Championship by getting their own mother, Helen Hart, to throw in the towel for Bret as he was facing Bob Backlund. The legendary and more senior in age Bob Backlund title reign did not last long because Diesel won it a few days later with the WWE attempting to turn Diesel face during the show. The low point of the night was certainly the match between Jerry Lawler, Three Midgets, and Doink the Clown and Three Midgets of his own. One of the worst wrestling matches in WWF history. At Survivor Series 1995, WWE tried something different, 
with a wild card elimination match with a mix of faces and heels on opposing sides. The face trio of Shawn Michaels, Ahmed Johnson, along with heel British Bulldog, ended up winning. A gimmick that would be interesting to see done in today's WWE. Hosted in the iconic Madison Square Garden in New York City, Survivor Series 1996 is arguably the best show of the new generation era. Psycho Sid faced off against Shawn Michaels for the WWE Championship, a match which Psycho Sid used a camera as a weapon against the Heartbreak Kid. And Bret Hart and Steve Austin also faced off, creating a stellar double main event that still holds up today. The Rock also debuted at this Survivor Series and was the sole survivor in a below average elimination match. The main event between Michaels and Sid was unique because Michaels was the face, but the crowd didn't like him as much as they liked Sid, and fans cheered when Sid cheated to win the title. Survivor Series 1997 is arguably the most infamous pay-per-view in WWE history, as it was the night of the infamous Montreal Screwjob. At the time, Bret Hart was set to leave the WWF for its competitor, World Championship Wrestling, or WCW. However, he was the reigning champion, and there were concerns about him taking the title with him. The situation became complicated due to a clause in Hart's contract that allowed him creative control over his character and input on the outcome of matches. The controversy arose when Vince McMahon, the owner of WWF, allegedly made the decision to change the match's ending without informing Bret Hart. During the match, Vince McMahon instructed the referee, Earl Hebner, to call for a bell and declare Shawn Michaels the winner, even though Hart had not submitted. This unexpected conclusion shocked Hart and the rowdy Montreal audience rooting for their homeboy, Bret Hart. The incident led to real-life animosity between Bret Hart and Vince McMahon, as well as between Hart and Shawn Michaels. The Montreal Screwjob is one of the most talked about and debated moments in professional wrestling history, as it raised an ethical question about the relationship between performers and management, as well as the blurred lines between scripted entertainment and real-life issues in the world of professional wrestling. Survivor Series 1998, also known as The Deadly Games, was different from previous events, especially in terms of its format and main storyline. The significant difference was the introduction of a tournament to determine the new WWF champion. This was necessitated by the fallout from the previous year's Montreal Screwjob and the subsequent departure of Bret the Hitman Hart to WCW. The tournament featured 14 wrestlers competing in a series of one-on-one -on -one matches leading up to a finals where a new champion would be crowned. The tournament brackets included notable names such as The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Undertaker, Mankind, Kane, and many more. There was a huge moment during the Mankind vs. Steve Austin semifinal as Shane McMahon entered as the referee and was going to count the win for Austin, but he stopped and gave Austin double middle fingers. It was a shocking heel turn from Shane who was fairly new to character to WWE television at that point. Mankind ended up getting a cheap win and moving on to the finals. In the finals, the rising babyface Rock faced off against the corporate McMahon-backed Mankind. However, in a shocking turn of events, Vince McMahon interfered, leading to the Rock aligning with McMahon and turning heel. The Rock won the match and the WWF Championship, solidifying his heel persona and aligning himself with the villainous Mr. McMahon, the owner of the WWF. Survivor Series 1999 would be a return to the normal scheduled programming for Survivor Series, with elimination tag matches back on the card. However, that's not what Survivor Series 99 is most known for. It's actually known for... In October 2000, Rikishi was revealed as the driver in an attempt to assist The Rock. I did it for The Rock. Interestingly enough, this show also saw the debut of Olympic gold medalist and future Hall of Famer Kurt Angle. Survivor Series 2000. The turn of the millennium brought us one of the strangest endings to a pay-per-views, let alone a Survivor Series, as the main event Stone Cold Steve Austin vs. Triple H ended when Stone Cold Steve Austin commandeered a forklift, lifted a car into the air, and dropped the car onto the ground. Inside that car was Triple H this match would end in a no contest.
Survivor Series 2001. In 2001, the WWF roster got a bit bloated, with an influx of former WCW and ECW talent joining the locker room when both companies went under, leading to the infamous Invasion storyline. However, the strangest thing about the failed WCW and ECW invasion of WWE was that the match is often delivered, and Survivor Series 2001 is the perfect example. The nightmare storyline culminated in the main event with some of the WWE's best wrestlers, The Rock, Chris Jericho, Big Show, Kane, and The Undertaker, defeating the Alliance team, made up of Steve Austin, Booker T, Kurt Angle, Rob Van Dam, and Shane McMahon. Kurt Angle turned on the Alliance by hitting his teammate Steve Austin with a WWE Championship, which allowed The Rock to hit the rock bottom on Austin to win the main event, ending the storyline in a great match, despite the storyline being less than desirable. Back in Madison Square Garden, Survivor Series 2002 was the second time the company diverged from the traditional elimination tag match with the debut of the Elimination Chamber. The hellish structure, which would later garner its own pay-per-view, was the brainchild of Triple H, who drew the original concept on a restaurant napkin. The first ever chamber match saw Triple H defend his World Heavyweight Championship against Shawn Michaels, Chris Jericho, Booker T, Kane, and Rob Van Dam. The match was epic and revolutionary, with Shawn Michaels coming out on top, winning the World Championship, and culminating his comeback journey. However, the debut of the Elimination Chamber wasn't without its faults. The dangerous structure led to several injuries during the match, including Rob Van Dam, who injured his leg, and Triple H, who had his throat crushed by Rob Van Dam after he jumped off the top of the chamber. However, WWE really delivered a home run at Survivor Series 2002, with a spectacular card that also included the Big Show ending Brock Lesnar's undefeated streak to become WWE Champion after Paul Heyman turned on Lesnar, as well as a fantastic elimination tag match for the titles as Los Guerreros defeated Edge and Rey Mysterio and Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit. The unique thing about this show is that there were five title matches and five title changes, a rarity at a WWE pay-per-view. Survivor Series 2002 is easily one of the best ever put on and definitely worth revisiting. Survivor Series 2003 saw the return to the traditional format and delivered with a stellar main event as Team Bischoff, comprising of Chris Jericho, Christian, Mark Henry, Scott Steiner, and Randy Orton, faced off against Team Austin, which comprised of Shawn Michaels, Booker T, Rob Van Dam, Bubba Ray, and Devon Dudley. The match was really the Randy Orton-Shawn Michaels show. Michaels really carried the match as he fought as an underdog with a bloody head and nearly got the win until Batista showed up with a cheap attack allowing Randy Orton to secure the win and cement himself as a star of the future. This alongside a fun ambulance match between Kane and Shane McMahon and a buried alive match between The Undertaker and Vince McMahon, this marked another solid outing for the annual pay-per-view. Survivor Series 2004, Randy Orton's success would only continue this year when he was left alone in the main event against two of the top heels in the company, Edge and Triple H. Orton would hit two RKOs in under two minutes, winning the match despite the odds and putting himself over as a top face. The following year at 2005's Survivor Series was yet another solid outing for the November pay-per-view, highlighted by a bloody last man standing match between Triple H and the nature boy Ric Flair. This 27-minute brutal match really showed how great the 56-year-old Flair still was. The main event was an entertaining affair as well, with the most memorable moment being when The Undertaker showed up after Randy Orton was celebrating with Team SmackDown, scaring the life out of them and laying waste to the entire team. A hot ending for the show. Regrettably, the night wasn't all on point, with the worst part of the show being an embarrassingly bad six-minute comedy match between Teddy Long and Eric Bischoff. The Survivor Series pay-per-view hot streak was bound to end eventually, and 2006 was that year. The show was largely a letdown, with the unceremonious end to Lita's first run in the WWE as Crime Time would sell off the future Hall of Famer's belongings in a so-called ho-sale a segment that would certainly not be featured today. The main event saw Batista be King Booker for the World Heavyweight Championship in a very boring match. According to Booker T, the two men got into a legit fight several months before while they were taping a SummerSlam commercial, 
which Booker apparently won. No doubt we would have been better off seeing this shoot fight than seeing the snoozer we got. Survivor Series 2007 would be an improvement from 2006, as we saw Batista win the World Heavyweight Championship by defeating The Undertaker inside a Hell in a Cell match, after Edge interfered in the match by attacking The Undertaker, which would lead to their eventual clash at WrestleMania 24, as well as Randy Orton beating Shawn Michaels in a great technical wrestling match, with the interesting stipulation that Michaels wasn't allowed to use his finisher, Sweet Chin Music. It played very well into the finish, because when Michaels was ready to finish him off, he remembered he couldn't do the kick, and in this hesitation, Orton hit Michaels with an RKO and retained the title. Survivor Series 2008 was another mediocre show at best. Edge won the WWE title in an extremely cheap manner, because during the match between Triple H and Vladimir Kozlov, a rather horrible match for the title, Vicky Guerrero, then SmackDown GM, introduced Edge to the match which was Edge's return after being out for three months. Jeff Hardy also got involved, drilling everybody with chair shots, ultimately allowing Edge to get the pin on Triple H to win. The match wasn't great by any stretch of the imagination, but it made for a memorable title change. However, the elimination tag match was a rather entertaining bout as Team JBL faced off against Team HBK. Survivor Series 2009 was a strange time in WWE, as the change to PG programming and lack of strong heels led to a main event featuring three faces at the time. John Cena defended the WWE Championship against D-Generation X buddies Shawn Michaels and Triple H, who were also faces at the time. Big Match John would ultimately come out on top, as he often did during this era, making for a largely forgettable pay-per-view, despite this event having one of the coolest pay-per-view posters ever. Survivor Series 2010 was unfortunately another dud, as there was only one traditional elimination match on the main show, and it was average and forgettable. The highlight for the night was Daniel Bryan's win over Ted DiBiase for the US title. This was during a time when Bryan was starting to win people over with his great matches in in-ring skills. The main event, on the other hand, was a boring mess, as Randy Orton faced a rookie Wade Barrett with John Cena as the special referee. Randy Orton and John Cena would have to fight off Barrett's Nexus faction. Cena was kayfabe fired after the show, even though he was never off TV for any time. It was an overall pretty lame storyline, as Cena would go on to bury the Nexus in any momentum they had garnered. Survivor Series 2011 would be a big step up from the previous three shows. Returning to Madison Square Garden for the pay-per-view helped make Survivor Series 2011 a huge success. The Rock had his first match in over seven years, teaming with John Cena. They were billed Rock and Cena, never before, never again, against The Miz and R-Truth, or The Awesome Truth. After Cena and Rock won, The Rock hit Cena with a rock bottom to set up their WrestleMania 28 main event just a few months later. CM Punk also beat Alberto Del Rio for the WWE Championship. This had the crowd peak for a feel-good moment as Punk celebrated with fans after it was all over. That was the start of Punk's 434 days as WWE Champion that ended at Royal Rumble 2013. Survivor Series 2012 is best known for the debut of three men who would define the future of pro wrestling in the 2010s and the 2020s, both inside and outside of the WWE. The Shield, a deadly new faction the likes fans had never seen before, made up of three future world champions, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, or John Moxley, and Roman Reigns, debuting in the main event by attacking Ryback and putting him through the announce table with a powerbomb. That led to CM Punk covering John Cena to retain the WWE Championship. The debut of The Shield was the start of a new era in WWE. The announcers did a good job of saying their names to try to inform the audience. It was a shocking debut, and the rest was history. Survivor Series 2012 also brought a solid traditional elimination match, as Dolph Ziggler's heel team beat Mick Foley's face team in a surprising match. Survivor Series 2013 is the show where it became obvious that Roman Reigns was going to get a monster face push. The Shield were still heels, but they were getting cheered more and more by fans. Reigns was booked as a monster that eliminated three guys and was the sole survivor of the match. The main event, though, was a massive flop, as a heel Randy Orton beat the Big Show to retain the WWE Championship, leaving fans in a similar state to the Big Show after the match. Man, did he cry a lot during this era. 
Survivor Series 2014 gave us one of the best elimination tag matches in over a decade as Team Cena faced off against the villainous Team Authority. The 45 minute main event match really carried the show, culminating with the debut of Sting in the WWE. While Triple H was trying to help Team Authority win, Sting dropped Triple H with the Scorpion Death Drop and put Dolph Ziggler onto Seth Rollins to give Team Cena the win. The stipulation that the Authority would lose their power with the loss in this match however led to nothing, as they were back in power within months. Sting's return to the WWE would overall be meaningless as well, as he would go on to lose his one and only match to Triple H at WrestleMania. Survivor Series 2015 would largely shift the focus away from the traditional elimination match, as the main focus of this card was the WWE Championship Tournament Finals, as Roman Reigns defeated Alberto Del Rio in a decent semifinal match, and Dean Ambrose beat Kevin Owens in a great match, and then the final was set. Roman versus his old Shield teammate Ambrose. Reigns would go on to beat Ambrose, giving Roman his first ever world title. However, it was a short-lived glory for the future Tribal Chief, as Sheamus would end up cashing in his money in the bank, leaving Survivor Series as WWE Champion. Brand Competition 2016-2021 During the first brand extension period, between 2002 and 2011, there were only a few Survivor Series matches that were held between wrestlers of the two brands, i.e. Team Raw and Team SmackDown but it was not the focus of the event. However, with the return of the brand split in 2016, Survivor Series took on the theme of direct competition between the two brands, Raw and SmackDown, for brand supremacy, similar to the former Bragging Rights event held during the first brand split in 2010 and 2011. In addition to traditional Survivor Series matches, pitting the men and women from the two brands against each other, 2016 and 2018 also featured matches with the brand's tag team champions going up against each other. There were also inter-promotional matches that featured the brand's champions against each other in non-title matches, such as pitting the Raw Women's Champion against the SmackDown Women's Champion. The 2016 event was the genesis for what became the theme-based brand supremacy, featuring the longest ever elimination match in WWE history as they went for a total of 53 minutes, with lots of fun moments and SmackDown ultimately prevailing. However, despite this, perhaps the most memorable moment of the night was when Goldberg beat Brock Lesnar clean in a minute and 26 seconds in the main event. Lesnar had never been booked like this before, so it was rather shocking. In 2017 and 2018, Raw won the competition with a score of 4-3 and 6-1 respectively. The 2019 show saw the addition of the NXT brand, which previously served as WWE's developmental territory, but became one of WWE's three main brands in 2019, and in turn featured the first ever three-way Survivor Series elimination matches for men and women. NXT subsequently won that year's competition with a score of 4-2-1, to one, with SmackDown having two points and Raw's sole win occurring on the pre-show. This event allowed lesser known stars of NXT to shine. However, NXT would not compete the following year in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Outbreaks of the virus had occurred at both NXT's home arenas, Full Sail University and the WWE Performance Center, prompting the WWE to exclude NXT wrestlers from the event to avoid potential transmission of the virus to members of Raw and the SmackDown roster. Raw would go on to win that year's competition with a 4-3 victory over SmackDown inside the WWE Thunderdome. Survivor Series 2021 also did not include NXT, as the brand reverted to its status of WWE's developmental territory in September of that year. At the 2021 event, Raw again won the competition with a 5-2 victory over SmackDown. However, it was clear that the brand supremacy, brand warfare style of Survivor Series was running dry. Something had to be done. On September 19th, 2022, WWE executive Triple H announced that the 2022 Survivor Series would not be based on the brand supremacy concept. Additionally, he announced that the event would feature two War Games matches, one for the men and one for the women, marking the first time for this match to ever be on a main roster WWE event. Created by the late great American Dream Dusty Rhodes in 1987, War Games was a staple of Jim Crockett Promotions and later WCW. 
the match type sees two rings surrounded by a giant steel cage where two teams of four or five battle it out in elimination rules. The 2022 event was in turn renamed as Survivor Series War Games, and it was also the first Survivor Series to be held on a Saturday. The NXT brand previously held the annual War Games event from 2017 to 2021. With the War Games match moving to the main roster for Survivor Series, this subsequently ended NXT's War Games, which was replaced by NXT Deadline. At the inaugural Survivor Series War Games 2022, fans were treated to two excellent War Games matches. On the women's side, it was Team Bel Air comprised of Bianca Bel Air, Alexa Bliss, Asuka, Becky Lynch, and Mia Yim, who defeated Team Damage Control, comprised of Bayley, Dakota Kai, Io Sky, and Rhea Ripley, as well as Nikki Cross, and an exciting match that really highlighted the talent of the women's division. In the main event, an epic clash between Roman Reigns' bloodline, comprised of the Usos, Solo Sokoa, and Sami Zayn, and of course Roman himself, versus Team Brawling Brutes, made up of Sheamus, Ridge Holland, Butch, and the additions of Drew McIntyre and Kevin Owens, and an exceptionally entertaining main event that despite no title being on the line, beautifully furthered the storyline of the bloodline. Thus concludes the history of Survivor Series, but each year a new chapter will continue to be added, and this year 2023 is no different, as on November 25th, live from Chicago, we will once again be treated to Survivor Series War Games.